This is Channel 25 WVTT Olean. Now, from the Twin Tiers' biggest broadcast news operation, this is the 6 o'clock report with Jeff Andrelonis and Alexa Olson. Listen on News Radio 96.7 WVTT or watch on News Channel 25 WVTT Television. WVTT proudly presents the 6 o'clock report. Good evening, I'm Alexa Olson. And I'm Jeff Andrelonis. Good evening. The big story tonight on Twin Tiers Evening News. What do you think the state of the Empire State is? Well, New York State Governor Andrew Cuomo yesterday delivered the State of the State Address, touching on topics like gun control, Sandy Aid, and minimum wage, and also bringing up some new ideas like lengthening the school year for children. With more on the State of the State Address, let's go live to the WVTT Digital News Center, where WVTT's Valerie Tysander is standing by. Valerie, you talked with some local folks to get their reaction to the State of the State Address from the governor. What have you found out? Jeff, uh, Governor Andrew Cuomo's State of the State Address last night, he talked about a lot of controversial things. So I did just what you mentioned. I talked to some local figures in Olean to see what they thought about his proposals. He says he owns a gun, but in the state of the state address, Governor Andrew Cuomo called for even stricter gun regulations. Agenda number one, enact the toughest assault weapon ban in the nation, period. New York already has some of the most stringent gun laws in the United States, but Governor Cuomo thinks more can be done, especially in light of the recent shootings. Most notably, Cuomo called for a ban of magazines with a capacity of more than 10 rounds. I believe there should be a limit on the multi-capacity magazines, and I don't think anyone's going to argue that. I think he could limit it to five. You know, someone's just going to have to carry more magazines. He also proposes closing the private sale loophole by requiring background checks, regular checkups of gun owners to ensure they are still qualified to possess guns, and a ban on assault rifles, and a ban on assault weapons. I certainly am not looking to knock on anyone's door and ask for their assault weapon back. Olean Police Chief Schnell says he understands where the governor is coming from, but the devil is in the details. They want to uh, revisit those people who have gun permits and see if their status has changed in one way or another. Who is going to do that? Is it going to be a new function of the state government? I mean, are they going to create a department for that? You know, the state is broke now. Where are we going to get the money for it? Governor Cuomo did more than talk about gun control in the state of the state address. He also addressed education reform. Uh, One suggestion he had was to increase the amount of time spent in the classroom by 300 hours annually. Julianne School Superintendent Dr. Colleen Taggarty weighed in. I'm, I'm optimistic in that it truly will be an opportunity for districts to look at how we use time in the course of a year rather than have the calendar and when we have our spring breaks, our winter breaks, our midwinter breaks drive the learning process. I think it's starting to go in the right direction of what should be the focus. Governor Cuomo also proposed a new means of revenue for New York State, building three new private casinos in upstate New York. His proposal is controversial because if the casinos are built in Buffalo or Rochester, it will violate an agreement with the Seneca Nation of Indians New York signed in 2001. That contract doesn't expire until 2016. It's important to note that Governor Cuomo says the state won't infringe on gambling contracts and what he says are in good standing. And both, if that is true, both Buffalo and Rochester will be out of the running for those new casinos as they already are uh, being manned by the Seneca as they have three casinos, one in Buffalo, one in Niagara Falls, and one in Salamanca. From the WVTT Digital Newsroom, I'm Valerie Tysaner. Jeff, back to you. Excellent job tonight, Valerie. Thanks for getting those interviews for us. If you'd like to see Valerie's complete interviews uh, with local people here in Olean, visit our website. That's TwinTearsNews.com. Alexa? Well, Jeff, another hot topic that has seemingly infested the media lately is the quickly spreading flu virus. A severe outbreak of the flu is spreading hard and fast across the United States. More than 40 states are dealing with flu issues right now, and Boston's mayor has just declared a public health emergency. Germs can spread quickly, and you may be surprised at just how easy you can get sick. Lisa Sylvester reports. 
we touch so many things without even realizing it. <coughs> Take a simple trip on the subway. Buying a Metro card, going down the escalator. That's only the beginning. The flu virus can spread easily in an enclosed place like a subway station. The flu virus can spread to others up to six feet away, according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. And flu germs can remain suspended in the air. The top three ways to catch the flu, being near someone who is sick, who sneezes, coughs, or talks, spreading infected droplets, drinking from the same cup or sharing a utensil, and touching a germy surface and then touching your eyes or mouth. And you can pass the virus to someone before you even know you're sick. Somebody can be contagious with, in, with influenza uh, up to a day prior to developing symptoms. Symptoms typically present as sneezing and coughing and so on. And up to seven days post the, developing those symptoms. So the flu virus can be fairly contagious over a long period of time. To see how easy it is to spread germs, we tried out this experiment with something called glow germ. Just look at what this black light picked up. If this were the flu virus or cold germs, I would be leaving a trail behind for someone else to catch. Using cleaning products to keep surfaces germ-free can minimize the chances of spreading the flu, and it's important to wash hands thoroughly. Jessica Benton is with Calico Industries, a company that distributes glow germ as a way to teach proper hygiene. Some people sing the ABCs, happy birthday two times, but at least 20 seconds of vigorous washing, I do know when people do wash their hands, they may not go in between their fingers, get underneath their fingers. So there's lots of germs that you can't, obviously you can't see germs, but do get stuck behind when you don't wash your hands properly. According to the Centers for Disease Control, most of the country is now experiencing those high levels of influenza. Amy Sorg, CRNP and family medical specialist at Cole Memorial Hospital says that extra caution needs to be taken to protect against the spreading of flu, especially for certain people who are considered to be high risk as it may lead to death. Now this includes young children, people older than the age of 65, pregnant women, people with weakened immune systems. Now in Pennsylvania, the Department of Health reported over 3,000 flu cases identified during the final weeks of December. That's up from just over 2,000 cases reported just the week before. Now, according to the Pennsylvania DOH website, the current status for influenza activity has been labeled as widespread. Dr. A. Ramina Arya from Cole Memorial's Bowman Health Center in Smithport noted she also urges people to ask themselves these questions to determine if they have the flu or just a cold. Do you have a fever? Do you have a muscle ache or pain? Do you have congestion or a stuffy nose? Do you have a sore throat? Sneezing? Do you have watery or itchy eyes or a dry and hacking cough? Or maybe you have a moist cough. Do you feel fatigued or do you have a headache? She says that if you answered yes to having a fever, aches, and extreme fatigue, then you probably have the flu. Sneezing and watery, itchy eyes will most likely be allergies and congestion or a stuffy nose probably means you have a cold, Jeff. Well, the best way to ward off the flu is to drink plenty of water, take vitamin C, and get lots of exercise. You're on your own for the water and the vitamin C, but Wellsville residents can get their exercise with a new opportunity to partner with the YMCA. Now, local residents will be able to get more information about YMCA recreation programs at a meeting that's going on right now and another meeting that will start at 1230 Saturday afternoon at the Howe Library in Wellsville. As of Tuesday, the YMCA began administrating recreation department activities in the community center through a contract with the town. That includes a county office for the aging program for older adults. An Allegheny woman is facing charges tonight after she was arrested following an incident that happened earlier this week in the town of Allegheny. According to the Cattaraugus County Sheriff's Office, 53-year-old Gail Peterson was arrested for second-degree harassment and fourth-degree stalking. She was taken for arraignment and is due back in court at a later date. A former Buffalo teacher is on the run. She's charged with having an inappropriate relationship with one of her students. Here's a mugshot of Kara Dickey. She's, uh, she admitted to having a relationship with a 14-year-old student while teaching at a South Buffalo charter school, according to authorities. Police in Buffalo tell WVTT that Dickey disappeared while on parole after she cut off her ankle monitoring bracelet. Police believe that Dickey and the boy had a suicide pact at the time, but she couldn't complete it because she was arrested. Now, parole officers say that they just got information that Dickey might be involved with another minor at the time. 
And baseball stars Barry Bond, Roger Clemens, and Sammy Sosa have been denied entry to baseball's Hall of Fame, with voters failing to elect any candidates for only the second time in four decades. We will have more on that story later on WVTT Sports. Jeff? Alexis, still to come tonight on Twin Tiers Evening News, our first look at weather in just minutes. Also straight ahead, our global news update and also the WVTT Wall Street wrap-up. All coming up here on News Channel 25 WVTT.